you was going, no, no, no. I remember what you did. Now you're going to just because you came, you found out that the grass wasn't greener. You're going to try to come back and get me. I don't think so. Heck no. And then you got to remember that the person who used to do stuff with you, who used to touch your base and let you and you touched her base and she touched your base you touched each other's bases oh yeah you now know she knows how to push your buttons because she was the one pushing your buttons before and she remembers because it hasn't been that long it didn't take her that long to realize that the grass was not greener out there and you had some green grass she should have never stopped wiggling her toes and so she starts to push the buttons and like I said, it hasn't been long since the last time she pushed your buttons. So she knows what buttons to push. And because your button hasn't been pushed in a little while, you want your button pushed by a person who really knows how to push your buttons. So you have the conversation. You talk. And the next thing you know, you're in your car, anticipating hours of button pushing. And you run up the steps and she opens up the door. You don't even talk. You just begin tapping each other's keyboard. If you understand what I'm saying, you tap each other's keyboard over the course of that weekend so much. You ever have a keyboard, your computer, you have a computer so long that the letters aren't even on the keys anymore because you tap the keyboard so much. Well, let's just put it to you this way. In this particular occasion, neither one of you can tell what letters are on the keyboard because of all the button pushing you did. But just like anything else, sometimes you go back and you re that's my phone. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I forgot to turn it off. You go back and you realize that all the good stuff is the, is the stuff you remember. You remember just the good stuff. You don't remember all the bad stuff that happened. It's kind of hard to remember bad stuff when neither one of you is wearing anything. And things are jiggling. Right? You're walking around the house. You don't even bother putting anything back on because you know why put it back on. Is this going to come back off? That's what you do all weekend. Right? And because... You broke up, you begin to fill your schedule with work and other activities. So you're not around each other enough to do what is known as pushing the wrong buttons. The red flags are in storage, but they're still there. And at some point, you're going to be around long enough and you're going to push that button. It's going to be like a landmine. It's going to be like that game when you, you know, like those games back in the eighties where you try to, you, you know, like a, like maybe in Jenga now where you pull out the wrong block and everything falls apart. At some point that's going to happen, but you're so busy enjoying the rekindling of something that should not have been rekindled that you don't notice it. And then you hear the door open. It's the storage closet where all the red flags were and are. And one red flag falls out and hits the floor. And you're like, oh, no, there's that red flag again. Right. But you you, 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 you just concentrate on the button pushing. You just want to push them buttons, get your buttons, push, you start pushing. And because the red flag, you're trying to drown out the red flag. So you push those buttons, you keep pushing the crap out of each other's buttons. And eventually another red flag falls out and another red flag falls out and another red flag falls out. And another red flag falls out. You don't even notice the red flags because you're so busy pushing each other's buttons, if you understand what I'm saying. And then eventually, all the red flags come out again. Right? You start getting annoyed a little bit too easily. Or she starts getting comfortable with you again. And all the other stuff starts happening all over again. Right? She runs across a guy that makes a lot more money than you. Right? And she's starting to think, that's great and everything, but I think I'm going to test this other guy's buttons while I still have his buttons to see whether or not I like the other guy's buttons better, right? And you start noticing things, right? You start noticing, well, where is she? I thought she stopped smoking, but then you realize it's not the bad part that she stopped smoking. You thought she stopped smoking. It's the fact that where did these cigarettes go? These cigarettes are from a motel. And the last time I checked, you don't need to go to a motel five miles outside of the city to get cigarettes. You get cigarettes at the front desk. No, no, no. You get cigarettes from the rooms. 
And you're probably going, well, how do you know? It doesn't really matter because, yes, did I go to those hotel rooms and take care of business? Yes. Not when I was cheating, but when I was, you know, doing to pushing buttons when I was single and free and clear. That's not there's nothing wrong with that. I wasn't in a relationship. And if I go to those places and take care of business, that's not a big deal. But in this particular case, you and her are back in a relationship that she pursued. You're thinking, wait a minute. If she pursued the relationship, she must have realized because you're stupid. (laughs) And you confront her. What's this? Holding up the cigarette, holding up the matches. Oh, so you're going through my things again? And you're going, no, I'm not going through your things. Only thing I went through was the bathroom, and I saw these on the floor. Well, I think one of my girlfriends, none of your girlfriends, come on, man, stop. And then you realize, there's a second closet, and more red flags fall out. This time, there's so many red flags, it actually falls on top of you, and damn, gone near knocks you unconscious. Sometimes you break up for a reason. And if I had the technology that I have now, I would have never been in that situation because I would have never picked up the phone. Sometimes as a young man, you want to have your buttons pushing to push some buttons so much that you will put up with things that an older version of me, even a slightly older version of me, a version of me that when I went in my uh, late 20s, early 30s would have never put up with that. First of all, you would have noticed the things that were changes a lot faster. But daggone shit, because I've been in a situation similar like to that maybe five years after that, and I just shut it down. Said, nah. But I would just, nope, we're done. Get out. I don't go and call me again. Never want to see you again. And that was the end of that. And that's when the process came. Because I remembered, I don't know whether or not if somebody who I like pushing their buttons and they like pushing my buttons if you understand what I'm saying I don't want to even put myself in a situation where they can get on the phone and and catch me at a weak moment I don't really have weak moments when it comes to that kind of thing I'm pretty stern pretty rock solid I can stay away from it I have control over that but I don't want to test it say for the sake of argument you come from a family of people that have substance abuse problems And you don't realize whether it's a societal component or whether it's a genetic component or whether it's something unique to that specific individual. If you see that from two or three or four or five people, that's my phone again. Don't worry about it. Five or six people in your family have that problem. Do you really want to test it? You can see what happened to them. You can see what happened in their lives. You can see how substance knocked them down. And the last thing you want to do is be in a situation What that happens to you, especially when you see examples of what substance abuse can do. And those people have the same genetics as you. So what do you do when I'm in that particular situation? I don't necessarily have a lot of people with substance abuse problems in my family, per se. But I've seen it happen to people around me and I've seen what happened to them. And I was wise enough to never take an illegal substance. And I was wise enough to never never let myself get drunk on alcohol. I was wise enough, even though I don't think it would be a problem if I had a couple beers here and there. I don't even mess with that crap because I don't want to find out. And that's why with the technology we have now, I don't take old girlfriends numbers out of my phone. Oh, no, I lead them suckers right in there. Once again, as I've said to many, many friends and all my friends are listening and they understand this. I have all my ex-girlfriends in my phone. Well, not all of them, but the last few of them in the phone under H. Because when their names come up, it's hell no one, hell no two, hell no three, hell no four, and so forth. So when I pick up that phone and I look at it and I see hell a hell no number, I know daggone well I am not talking to that person. Hell no. And thus the name hell no. Technology is a fantastic thing. We can use it to do amazing things. I'm waiting for AI to get to the point. People are worried about whether AI is going to take over the world. If it does... You know, we got ourselves to blame, but I'll, we'll, we'll, just, we'll just say for the sake of argument in the near future, AI in the beginning before it takes over the planet and destroys all of us, <laughs> that it gets to the point where it could, it, they're using it now, they're at the point now where they're saying essentially that AI can detect diseases earlier than doctors in some cases. I mean, at some point, they're going to be able to do that. AI will be able to diagnose and that'd be kind of cool, wouldn't it? Right? 
I would like 